Morning guys, it's Blackie. How you doing today? Okay, today we're going to be talking about an axe and some safety protocols with an axe. Now I started a series a while back talking about an axe and I will link to it right up here somewhere. And I had a subscriber contact me and say they're just now starting to use an axe and would I go a little more in depth on a couple of points. And so that's what this is. So these are tips that every woodsman should know about an axe. Okay, number one, you keep the cover on the axe until time to chop. That's a no-brainer. This is a sharp implement with a lot of power behind it. And it's so dang easy to hurt yourself with it, either by just simply dropping it, kicking it when it's in camp, or whatever. So whenever you're in anything doing the axe, and the axe is not engaged chopping, you keep the bib on it, keep the cover on the edge. Next. Whenever you're in camp with it, stand it up, hook it, whatever it is you want to do, but whatever it is, make sure that it is in a position where you're not going to kick it, okay? I have seen this in my personal experience a couple times people over the years. We would have an axe in camp. It would be propped up next to that stump over there or by that tree. A group of people were all camping, were all moving, and da da da. And invariably, somebody would kick it. And if you're wearing flip flops in camp because you're letting your boots cool, that could be very bad. So do not leave it uncovered again. And if you are going to put it down, put it somewhere very visible and out of the way where you're not going to kick it. That's the second point. Now, let's talk about how to carry the axe. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about the actual carrier where I'm transporting from A to B, okay? I have now reached where I'm going to utilize the axe, okay? So, I'm now going to come up and I'm going to chop X over here. Whenever I make the mental change, okay, I'm now about to use the axe, this stuff goes away. Haversacks, straps, anything that can hang, hook, hook on, you know, whatever. If it can bind me up, I take it off. I want to be clean, because you're getting in here usually in something fairly thick, the limb or whatever. So I need a clear flight path, and that includes on me. So remove anything on me that's going to be a problem. I'm going to drop my haversack, and we'll go to the next part. Okay, now I've removed all that stuff, so I have free range of motion. Okay, I'm not going to hang up on anything. Walking with the axe, and this is the way that I was taught by a lot of old woodsmen, and uh, a mentor of mine, Francis McGowan, was one of the ones that really bit me one time because I was being stupid. We were doing some limbing, some land clearing, and I was walking around with this razor sharp axe, not this one, but a razor sharp axe, and I was not respecting that edge in such a way that I was about to get hurt. And he made real sense. So, my method for carrying the axe when I'm walking and I'm not about to be engaged in it, but I'm going over here to be, right? Hold the axe in my left hand. Offset it just a little bit, like that. Now, tote it so that the handle is behind me. Should I trip and fall forward, the axe is behind me. I'm carrying it in my left hand. Should I trip, your instinct is to try to catch yourself with your right hand, correct? If you're right-handed. So whatever my dominant hand is, it's the opposite one, and it, the hex handle is behind me, like this. So if I fall, the axe is behind me. A lot of people want to do this. Now if I fall and went forward, where's that axe? I'm going to, uh like that and I'm going to try to grab the ground, which means I'm falling on this axe head. I can break ribs, I can do something like that, even if I'm not hitting the edge. It's a big hunk of metal. Put it in the other hand. Tuck the handle behind me. That's how I walk to target. Okay? So that it is stuck back here, out of my way. Next, when we get to the target, we're going to be chopping. I have a little technique I use that I will share with you now. It's for controlling the head. Okay. The way I do it is I put my right hand in position because I'm dominant right-handed, although I'm somewhat ambidextrous. Okay. 
I put the right hand in position and get it locked. Now, see where my hand is, where my left hand is holding the head? This is how I control this axe. When I'm, you know, maneuvering around here to get into striking position, this is how I hold it, just like this. I want to control that head. I see too many people want to do this. You don't have a lot of leverage there, okay? So this hand comes up here. Now when I get in position to strike, what I'm going to do is go up, get right about here, and the hand slides down. I come down, strike, thump. When I'm done with that stroke, I throw my shoulder out, slide my hand. See how I did that? Slide my hand, and I come up, hand slides down, strike, slide my hand. See this rotating motion? This is a lot like the way you paddle a canoe. Less effort, less motion this way. I'm always controlling that head. Now, if I have to check swing, I drop this hand down. See? I start to come down and whatever fell, I just drop this hand straight down and let that hand slide up and grab that head. So I control that head. The head's a big part that I need to keep an eye on. And so many people want to hold it out here like this or do this. Let me tell you, in my thick cover, this is going to hang a limb. And then you're going to pull. And you're going to whop yourself in the back of the head with the back of that edge. Just like that. I have seen that more than once. Where they're trying to walk through and that edge hangs a limb. And they, uh, and pull. And they pop themselves in the back of the head. So... Again, to reiterate, when you're walking from A to B, carry it in your uh, non-dominant hand, the edge offset, about like a 45. I don't like 90, and I don't like straight up and down. Offset it that way. There's very little chance I'm going to fall on that edge like that, okay? The handle is behind me. But should I fall, I am not going to entangle up that handle in any way. When I get into my position to chop, I anchor my hand. I bring it up. And also, let's talk about this. Up is good. This, that, that's what you use for killing dragons when you're swinging at maximum in the hero movie. You know, like that. That's a lot of work and that wears you out. The weight of the axe should be doing the work. So I should simply bring it up. And it's at about like that angle. Okay, I come down, bam, I twist out, catch, bam, twist out, catch, bam, twist out, catch. Notice how that left hand slides up and grabs that head every time, so I control that head. These are just simple little techniques, but it's because you're respecting the axe. When you get a good axe, and you get an axe razor sharp, a, you don't want to hurt yourself because it's normally pretty bad when you do. Two, you want to control that axe to be as efficient as, a, as possible with that axe. So by controlling my attack angle, I'm straight on when I hit, chop, chop, least motion wasted. I do not bring the axe way back here to it's just about in the middle of my back because then I've got to use all these other muscles to accelerate it. And yeah, that does make a very powerful, powerful chop, but it tires you out. And when you get tired, you get inaccurate. That's when the hand starts to get a little numb. That's when you start to get where you're not gripping it right, and etc. Now, what about, Blackie, what about changing angles? Okay. I come down at an angle, boom, boom. Now I need to change direction, boom, boom, see, I can change to the 45s to cut out with, always controlling that head, always the hand slides back up to take control of that head. Hope this gives you some ideas guys. 
please leave any questions or comments below. And it will cool off, I swear it will. And when it does, I'll do some more with an axe. Now, this is that one that... That one. This is the best... I would say this is the best camping axe I've ever had. And that's saying something. Um, I got this a while back. It was gifted to me. And I've been really impressed with it. I really have. I'll do a much more in-depth review with this thing coming up. Um, I understand that SRO carries these axes. They're out of Germany, I believe. Maybe wrong on that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, Germany. But uh, I've been nothing but impressed with it. I've used it for garden work. I've used it for lemon. I've used it for camping and several other things. I've just been really impressed. So we will get back to the axe. But for Justin who asked me to go back over those points for them because they're learning the axe right now. I hope this answers your question. If there's some other questions you'd like to know, please leave them in the comments, and I'll be glad to work with you. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.